This video is sponsored by Fantic. We'll talk more about their X8 tire inflator as well as a special offer just for my audience later in the show. Is there really anybody out there who's still confused about what riding an MT-10 does? Okay, last time. This is your brain. Golly gee willikers, what a beautiful day this is outside. It's not too hot, birds are chirping, but you know what? I really should get home and do my taxes. This is an MT-10. This is your brain on an MT-10. <laughs> Any questions? <clears throat> Whew. That was an interesting vocal warm-up, huh? I don't know what exactly did that. I think just the MT-10's energy just kind of brings it out of me. That is correct, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Today, we are playing with Yamaha's MT-10 right here, courtesy of the fine folks over at AF1 Racing. 2018. Oh my God, it's only 10,000. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's so affordable. Oh, if it's not already obvious, I really, really like this motorcycle. This is only the second time I've ridden an MT-10. I rode one a couple of years ago. I got it as a rental. And I really need to get this video on and over with because if I spend any more time with it, I'm just gonna buy this motorcycle. So let's hit the road and see how it shakes down in the twisties. Yeah, baby! <laughs> oh man, this bike is so good. Oh, it's got power for days, and the biggest thing, guys, is the handling is phenomenal. We're going to come back to it later, but this thing is basically just an R1 with a handlebar. Um, yeah, they changed the engine a little bit. Uh, they've detuned it, so it's not making the crazy top-end horsepower that the R1 does. But uh, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. It feels so nice. It's such a great motorcycle to uh, goof around with on the street, mostly just because of how easy it is to ride. Throwing it through these twisties, the handling is sublime. Uh, it is truly one of the greatest handling motorcycles you're gonna get south of $20,000. <laughs> uh. Is it accidentally? goes too fast and flips over my camera but the nice thing that I'll say is yes it is a hyper naked it's a hundred percent a hyper naked but it's not so vicious in its power delivery that you always feel like you're riding on the edge of an accident you know sometimes you get on those uh, hyper naked bikes something like the ZH2 or uh, even the Tuono from time to time can feel like this where it just, it doesn't, it doesn't chill out. Yeah, the Tuono has a touring mode, but I can tell you from experience, it's not, it's not a cruisable motorcycle. It, it really doesn't just chill. The MT-10, believe it or not, it's a chill bike. And then, you know, you get on the throttle and it wakes up, but it's not just like an instant kind of thing where it just rips out from underneath you and accelerates like nobody's business. Um, it's, it's predictable, it's smooth, it's linear. I really appreciate that out of this bike, especially as somebody who, uh, don't get me wrong, I like fast motorcycles, but I'm not the best rider in the world and I can occasionally find myself nervous on super duper fast motorcycles. And I still find myself uh, occasionally being like, whoa, that's, that's not what I expected that motorcycle to do. This never has that just outright aggression that feels like you're overriding your ability, at least for me. Uh, I wouldn't put a beginner on this, obviously. Um, I wouldn't go from your R3 or MT-03 to an MT-10, but 
in terms of a motorcycle that you can actually really have fun with and enjoy the ride, the MT-10 is great. It's got power when you need it, and it's chill when you don't. It's also worth pointing out that the brakes are phenomenal. Yeah, the new one's got a Brembo master cylinder and all that, and these are just the stock R1 house calipers, but they're still R1 house calipers, guys. <laughs> they work great. For what you're getting, for $10,499? Oh my God. And I know, I know new, they're like 14 grand, but this thing is used and it's 10 grand. <laughs> now, one thing I do want to mention before we skip over to the specs section is the auto blipper on this doesn't exist. It's got a quick shifter. Uh, one, two, yeah. Quick shifter works, but uh, no auto blipper. You push down, it's not there. You actually have to manually downshift and blip for yourself, but I like that. I, I prefer it, and I'm okay with this motorcycle having less technology. But that gives me a great opportunity to kick this over to the specs section, and let's talk about what this bike is packing under the hood, in case you haven't figured that out already. Now, before we get into the specs, I need to take a quick second to shout out the X8 tire inflator. I mentioned this in my tools video a few weeks ago, but I always carry one of these in my camera bag whenever I go out filming. They're small, but pack a punch big enough to fill up one of my Mazda's car tires from flat to full. All you have to do is select your desired pressure, hook it up, and then start it. Whether you're airing up and down for off-road riding, repairing a flat, or just airing up before you go for a ride, the X8 is genuinely a must-have in my opinion. For Prime Day, they're selling their most popular gear at the lowest prices ever, but just because I've got your back, you don't have to wait. All you have to do is click that link down in the description below and use the code SPITEX850 at checkout to receive 33% off the X8. This here is a limited time deal, so get them while they're hot. Remember, SPITEX850 for 33% off. All right, let's get back to it. Diving on in with the specs on this beast, it is powered by the R1's 999cc inline four with the cross plane crank. And I have to turn this thing on so you guys can hear it because this is probably one of the best sounds in motorcycling. Certainly the most unique because it's not quite a V4, but it's close. Take a listen. This thing has 160 horsepower in it and 82 foot-pounds of torque while weighing in at 468. Yeah, it's a little bit heavy. It's a little bit down on power compared to some of the other Hyper Nakeds out there, but are you really gonna use 200 horsepower? <laughs> there's, just, there's just so much power on tap with this bike that you're never wanting. And if you are wanting, you need to, I don't know, sit down and have a conversation with yourself about where your life has ended up <laughs> that much horsepower on a motorcycle. I'm sorry, it's just insane to talk about something with 160 horsepower as not being enough. Now, let's take a second and let's mount up on this bike and talk about the ergonomics because uh, it's really good here. It's really good, guys. So. First thing I want to mention is the seat is really wide under your butt, but really narrow between the legs. What that means is when you're sitting on it, you have all of your weight in a really nice, comfortable spot, and you still get a great reach to the ground. So if you're on the shorter side, you'll be able to make something like this work. I'm six foot four in my boots, usually six foot two, six foot three, kind of depends. Some days I'm feeling taller than others. I have a great easy reach to the ground. I've got a pretty aggressive bend in my knee and when I put my foot up on the peg, just the, the seating position is so neutral. It's, it's really, really nice. Now that gives me an opportunity to bring up my favorite and least favorite things on this motorcycle. As far as my least favorite things, it's a very short list. This motorcycle is the ugliest motorcycle ever made. Period, full stop, end of story. This thing is beyond hideously ugly, but when you're riding it, you don't see it. You don't see all the snorkels. You don't see how Megatron headbutted his garbage disposal. I can't get with how just ungodly hideous this motorcycle is. They started with something that looks awesome in the R1 and they 
turned it into this. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Everything else is glowingly positive. The equipment on this motorcycle is so phenomenal that I, as a normal human being, am not capable of using this motorcycle to its fullest. It's the R1 frame, it's the R1 suspension, it's the R1 engine, detuned slightly for a little bit more power, sure, but it's still an R1, man. They took one of the greatest leader bikes in history and they made it rideable. That's awesome, and it just, it feels so, it feels so good. Another thing that I love about this motorcycle, and some of you folks at home may not be with me on this, is I am okay with the previous gen tech package on here. I don't care that this thing doesn't have a TFT dash. I don't care that the clusters are a little bit clunky and cheap feeling. When this thing came out, it was like 13 grand used. This is $10,400, dude. Just go buy it. It's so good. I have no desire to go spend 14 grand on one of these when I can get a bike that's just as great with a couple of features that are perhaps a little out of date. Now, let's, uh, let's take this motorcycle out on the highway and I guess talk about how good it is on the highway, but really we're just gonna be doing a bunch of highway pulls. So let's go have some fun and see if we can avoid getting arrested. Alrighty, out here on the highway, there's a few pros and a few cons that I'd like to talk about. Uh, no huge major drawbacks, just a few things I would like to point out. But let's start out with the good stuff. So those ergonomics I was talking about before, yeah, no, they're really great out on the highway for cruising. You've got plenty of room to move around on this motorcycle, which I personally really appreciate. And you can kind of stand up on the pegs. Um, it's not super comfortable, but if you need to stretch out, it is nice to be able to stand up on this thing. Uh, it's not like an adventure bike where you can stand up for 10 minutes straight, but it's doable. Uh, do we really need to talk about passing power on this motorcycle? <laughs> it's got all of it, all of the passing power. Um, there, there really isn't uh, a car out there that you're not going to be able to get past out on the highway. Uh, it is worth pointing out while we're out here that its top horsepower numbers come in a lot later, basically right at red line. So uh, you are dealing with more torque. Um, it's not exactly the most snappy and instantaneous power band, but I kind of like that, especially if I'm going to commute on something. Now, one of the things that does kind of suck on this motorcycle, and it's true of basically any inline four, when you're just cruising around, these things are very buzzy. They're very, very buzzy. In fact, the uh, previous owner put these big um, smooshy grips on here to try and eat out some of the vibration. I'm still feeling a ton through the handlebars. Um, if you're one of those riders out there who gets sensitive that you get those like tingles in the tips of your fingers, if you're on a, you know, uh, a motorcycle that vibrates a lot, you will be dealing with that on here. Uh, one thing that can help though is the cruise control, which is super easy to use. Uh, doesn't turn on in anything under, under fourth gear, so first, second, third, doesn't work. Fourth gear and up, it does. It kind of makes sense to me, but with gearing this long, you know, I could see a reason where I may want to be in third gear and potentially pop the cruise control on. I wish it would just let me choose when to turn it on. Again, I understand why they did it, but it's annoying. Uh, it does have the roll to kill, which I love. Last thing I do really want to mention in this segment here, the gas tank, it's not it's not super big. It does have that little eco light that comes on when you're, you know, in uh, when you're being nice to the gas tank and you're, you know, you're just taking it easy. But uh, most of the time, that light is off on this motorcycle. Let's be real. I've been getting on average about 30-ish miles to the gallon, but then all of that goes out the window the second I have an opportunity to just kind of, you know, do one of these. <laughs> and then I use like a gallon of gas, just pff, gone like that. Obviously I'm exaggerating, but you get what I'm saying. 
I always say last thing and then I come up with one more thing to add, but truly the last thing on this motorcycle is it does have three modes. You've got one, two, and three. Their Yamaha was super, super inventive with their naming uh, for these modes. It, was, um, it took them a long time to figure it out, but they did it and I'm very proud of them. They got mode one, they got mode two, and they got mode three. Mode one is your full power mode, mode three is rain mode, and mode two is, you know, average mode. <laughs> um, they're actually kind of nice to have. Mode one is all the beans all the time, but you know, you dip it down into three and you still got a ton of power. I mean, it's still an empty 10, but it's a lot more chilled out. Uh, mode two, you just get a little bit more gusto. But with that, it is time to see what the Discord boys have to say about the MT-10. Let's pull this thing over and answer as many questions as I can in, uh, in a few minutes. Diving on in, the Lava Melon. Why get this instead of an R1? Because riding an R1 sucks. There is no reason to ride an R1 on the street. You should only ride one on a racetrack. A13, what are they like to tour on given that they have no fairing? Honestly, I don't like fairings when I'm touring. Uh, big fairings often end up leaving a lot of dirty air right around my head given my height. This windscreen's pretty good, honestly. Um, it's about as much as I would put on here. Otherwise, I'd just take it off and run it with bar and mirrors. And then Don ATX, would I go to Florida on this again or my uh, Hyperstrata? Definitely this. Um, cruise control for one thing, even though it's a little bit kind of old school, but it's just, it's more comfortable. Uh, it's got more power. It's, it's a better bike. The range isn't as good though. This thing, uh, it just, it eats gas, mostly because I ride it like a hooligan, so. Jerd asking one of the hard hitting questions here, as an MT-10 owner himself, how does it compare to the higher end Tuono and Ducati Street Fighter? Okay, the Street Fighter and the Tuono are, they're the apex predators in my opinion. They're, they're the best of the best. They're, they're vicious, they're fast, they're, they're so capable. Um, this definitely feels you, you feel a difference in the horsepower because it comes on a little bit later. It's still an inline four, not the V4. Um, but frankly, I don't care, man. Uh, this is just, this is a more playful motorcycle. The Tuono is angry all of the time. It's just, you can't find a spot where it just likes to chill out. And uh, believe it or not, the Ducati, you really need to rev the balls off of it to get to the horsepower. Um, I don't know, I really, really like this bike. It's probably my favorite Hyper Naked, period. A lot of questions about the uh, MT-10 here versus the MT-09, because they're pretty competitive motorcycles, frankly. Uh, we've got Expecto Delito asking, uh, MT-09 versus MT-10, is the MT-10 worth the uh, extra weight and the extra cash? Diabetes Man asking, MT-07 versus MT-09, felt like jumping two unitless numbers. Is the jump from the MT-09 to the MT-10 more than one? Yeah, okay. Put this to bed right now. This is a completely different ball game to the MT-09. The SP really helped to narrow the gap on this, but this is still a completely different animal. You're dealing with the R1 suspension, you're dealing with the R1's frame, you're dealing with the R1's engine. It's it's a very, very different bike. And it's, is it a meteoric leap forward? No, I think the MT-09 accelerates faster. Um, something about that triple just, it accelerates like no one's business. But this, it just has so much more muscle and it's, even compared to the 09 SP, I would say that this is a more composed motorcycle. Although, 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 I will say, if you have an MT-09 SP, it's not worth upgrading from to this, from that. The MT-09 SP for a street rider, you're gonna get the same level of enjoyment that this is gonna give you. This is just, if you're getting into the space, this is cheaper, uh, this is where I would go. Now let's take this thing back out on the road one last time and 
I guess, spend another few minutes talking about why it's so awesome and why you should just go buy one and don't think, buy, just be fast. Um, really, I just wanna go ride this thing around for five more minutes. Let's go have some fun. Whoa, that's like got a different horn on it. Nice, that's a car horn. Yeah, that's nice. I gotta see what horn that is. Okay, folks, so very clearly, uh, my review of this motorcycle is all but glowing. Um, it's, it's the first motorcycle where I really just don't, I don't find a flaw on it aside from the fact that it's, you know, ungodly ugly. Um, it's just, it's genuinely a treat to ride this thing. And, uh, to give you an idea, it's the first motorcycle I've ridden in a long, long time where I ride it and the experience of riding it gives me goosebumps. Um, something about the sound, the way it starts sizzling and searing over 7,000 RPM where that sort of change in the note goes from growl to scream. Just every time I hear that change it it gives me goosebumps but let's talk a little bit about it relative to the con competition just just a little bit more because i think a lot of people look at the mt10 as the uh i guess the the great value meal of hyper nakeds and you know what to an extent yeah they're kind of right it's it's affordable. Uh, it's not exactly an exotic motorcycle. You know, like when you think of getting a hyper naked motorcycle, you're looking for something that's truly special, something that's uh, one of a kind, or at least feels one of a kind, even though, you know, the motorcycle's built on a factory floor. You know, there's a bunch of them out there. Um, it doesn't feel like if you get an MT-10, Yours is going to feel, because of, you know, whatever mods you've done to it, like a different motorcycle. It's just going to be another MT-10 versus, you know, you get a Ducati. And sometimes one Ducati is just a little bit different from another. They're not, they're not all built exactly the same. There's definitely a mass-produced feel to the MT-10. However... Because it's mass produced, it means you can get more bike for less dollar. I don't, I don't need a bespoke, truly unique feeling motorcycle. I just want something fun. Something that is going to give me goosebumps every single time I twist the throttle. I don't think I could ever, ever in my life get used to the sound of this cross plane in line four hitting 9,000 RPM. There's just, there's that change. There's that change in the engine note. Right around 8,000, 9,000 RPM. Every time I hear that, I, I've been riding it around for hours today. Every time I hear it, it gives me goosebumps. Literally across my whole body. I can feel my hair standing up on end. And I, I don't know. I just, I haven't gotten that from a lot of other bikes. And the fact that this thing right now, this used motorcycle at AF1 is $10,400. I've been sitting here all day being like, oh man. Uh, maybe I need to go trade in my Hyperstrata. <laughs> uh, it's... It's so good, guys. It's so good. This is, this is truly, even though it's not a special motorcycle in terms of, you know, being this different thing, this truly unique object, um, it's a special bike because it's just, it's thrilling. It's truly thrilling. Last thing, uh, well, second last thing, I suppose. Um, you don't need a new one. You don't need to get a new one of these because they're not generationally different from one to the other because this is still so excellent 
just go get a used one in great shape like this that's already got some mods on it maybe it's already got an exhaust too because oh boy would this sound so good with an exhaust i know from personal experience uh yeah just just go find a used one guys um 10 grand 10 grand for the finisher motorcycle of your collection the one that uh certainly i would keep forever if i owned one and with that guys i'm gonna wrap this video up hopefully you enjoyed this uh simp parade i think that i think that's what this is this was this was just a, a simp summit here for the mt10 um oh <laughs> oh man it just makes me happy guys <laughs> come on buddy yeah let's go <laughs> oh it's so fucking good it's so fucking good Oh, hopefully you enjoyed this video, y'all. <laughs> and uh, a huge shout out to AF1 for letting me uh, consider ruining my life with <laughs> this empty oh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.